This is Ken the Metal Professor with another uh, delayed edition of Metal Professor's Music Basement. I am the host of a radio show called Mostly Metal in Valparaiso, Indiana, where I play heavy metal, mostly. And recently I've been playing out top 10 lists of various bands and then accompanying them with these little discussion videos. And tonight I'm going to do my preference ranking of albums and top 10 favorite songs by the British cheese metal band, sorry, a power metal band, Power Quest. There's been a gap between the last video I did and this one. My show airs um, Wednesday night from 10 to midnight and Sunday night from 8 to 10. And for the last few months, the original broadcast has been Wednesday and then the replay on Sunday. But since school is starting and my schedule is changing, I'm Ken the Metal Professor because I teach, you know. Um, since school is starting, I decided to revert to my original schedule, which is the live on Sunday night and then the replay on Wednesday. So that bumped me out a little bit. And then having set up this past Sunday as the date where I would go back and do live in the studio Sunday nights instead of pre-recording from home for a target of Wednesday night, I had a conflict that I didn't even realize. And so I was not able to go in and do my show Sunday night. So our station manager put in a, a rerun basically. And so now I'm still waiting to play out this top 10 list of Power Quest, but I figured at least I could do this video to go along with it before it hits the air. So if you're interested in listening to these songs, you can go to metalprofessor.com where I list them out with links to YouTube videos. You can also tune into my show, wvlp.org is the streaming site or the TuneIn radio app, or if you happen to live in Valparaiso, Indiana, 103.1 FM. But it's unlikely that you do. So these videos that I do are not intended to be like scholarly deconstructions of albums, songs, track lists. I'm just verbally making a list. I'm a list maker. I used to write them down, then I started typing them in, and now I'm yapping them out to go along with my online lists. This one in particular is going to be even less of any sort of, you know, even semi-deep conversation because I've had this list sitting here for a couple of weeks now and a lot of the, you know, just the really important thoughts that I had about these albums and songs have just gone. So basically, it's the list and we're going to get through it and then I'll move on to my next, my next subject next week, which is going to be uh, my top 10 favorite songs by Yes that are seven minutes or less. So let me tell you my listing of preference rankings for the albums by Power Quest. There are only six albums. Uh, the first one was Wings of Forever in 2002, and Alessio Garavello was the vocalist, and Steve Williams, the main songwriter and guitarist, he's, he's the one that's been in the band forever. Other personnel have sort of changed. Alessio Garavello was the vocalist for the first four albums. And then came Blood Alliance in 2011, their fifth album. And uh, they got a new vocalist. And it just so happens, not it, it's not bad vocals, it's just compared to the others, the vocals on Blood Alliance are my least favorite of the bunch. And, and most of the songwriting is my least favorite of the bunch. And if you go read on Wikipedia, this is an album where all of the personnel changed over. So maybe that's not surprising. So Blood Alliance from 2011 comes in at number six. Um, some of my my likes on this album are the songs Battle Stations and Glorious Survive and the song Crunching the Numbers happens to land at number five on my top 10 favorite songs list. Now it's sad for me to report that this album has my least favorite vocals of the six albums because the vocalist is Chitty Solapala, who I remember from years ago being a fun guy online in metal forums. He would hop around uh, in different places and interact with the, the rest of the fans. I mean, he was a fan just as much as anybody else. And so we were always happy to see him go to different projects. He was kind of another version of DC Cooper, somebody who didn't necessarily have a really one long-term home band or project. He kind of bounced from project to project when people needed a, a vocalist for a while. So it was always fun to watch him. And until I was looking this up, I didn't realize that he was the vocalist on Blood Alliance. And so he's a, he's a cool dude. And I'm just, you know, so I'm sad to report that Blood Alliance is my number six favorite 
Power Quest album. At number five, I'll put the debut, Wings of Forever, from 2002. Now, some of the songs are really good. Far Away is great. Good choruses. Power Quest Part 1 is good. Freedom of Thought. The problem with this album is that, uh, and I don't know if it's a production thing or just me being overly sensitive to it, but one of the things that I don't particularly like about power metal is when the drums get way far forward and it just turns into wham, 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 wham. I just call, I call it wham, wham metal. And this album is uh, a particularly good example of that, where every song is just wham, 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 wham. And there is melody and there is harmony and guitar solos and things like that. But still, wham, 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 wham from the, from the drums all the way through. And it gets to be a little much. So that one's at number five. At number four is Magic Never Dies from 2005. This is, to me, one of the, even though it's halfway through the list, it's one of the key albums because it really does sink into the style that Power Quest is known for. Hold On to Love uh, is great. Soul Fire, the title track, Children of the Dream. These are songs with, I mean, you either love it or you don't. It's it's the absolutely cheesy heavy metal with the, the soaring choruses and, you know, la-la-las and, and uh just it's happy music and, and it's an example of if you're somebody who always has to scowl when you're listening to heavy metal and you're not allowed to have it make you happy then power quest is not going to be for you on this album uh hold on to love happens to come in at number eight on my top 10 favorite songs and children of the dream which has a tremendous chorus in there comes in at number four Number three is Master of Illusion from 2008, Cemetery Gates, the title track, Save the World, uh, Never Again, and possibly one of the cheesiest songs that they've ever done, I Don't Believe in Friends Forever. Uh, it might be something that would play in a, you know, an ABC after school special, but I don't know. I like it. It's catchy. It's supposed to be catchy and it does its job. The song Never Again is number nine on my top ten favorites, and... One of these songs in this list appears higher on my list of favorite songs. I won't tell you what it is just yet. Coming in at number two, we're almost done already, Sixth Dimension from 2017. This is their most recent album now. Here is the, the, the next new vocalist. The first four albums had Alessio Garavello and then Chitty Somopala, and now Ashley Edison uh, sings. These vocals are really strong. Um, I like them. And this album at number two, it, I flipped back and forth whether this one was actually going to be my number one. And it's kind of odd that, you know, a newest album out of five or six ends up being so close to my favorite because a lot of times bands, they hit you with the really good stuff right away and then they sort of tail off. But that's not the case with Power Quest. Starlight City is an amazing tune. Face the Raven, No More Heroes, another amazing tune. That one's number six on my top ten list. Coming Home in the title track, The Sixth Dimension. The production on this one is the slickest. I mean, their production's always been pretty good. Uh, I mean, I, I don't do production, so I don't really know, but to my untrained ears, it sounds like very crisp and clean production. And I think the songwriting has a little bit more of an edge to it than a lot of the other albums where it's just kind of, you know, happy, happy power metal sorts of things. Starlight City in particular, the architecture of that song is is drastically different. Um, the vocal line that goes through before you get to the chorus is is probably one of my favorite stretches of five or ten seconds of anything in Power Quest. But my number one favorite song by Power Quest is Neverworld from 2003. This was their second album. Uh, it just it wins. Uh, it wins in terms of the the best of the best songs they're they're all in the same theme you know in the same they all give you the same vibe happy big choruses big guitars never world power quest part two in parentheses uh, i love it it's number 10 on my top 10 list forevermore edge of time well of souls well of souls is my number seven favorite power quest song and lost without you those are all great tunes so just in terms of consistency from beginning to end i like this album uh the best. So as Neverworld wins the best consistency of songs throughout um, Magic Never Dies back there at number four, that one wins the, the Cheese Award out of their discography. And so I mentioned some numbers here. Uh, my number 10 favorite Power Quest song is Neverworld, the title track off of Neverworld, but it's also, parentheses, Power Quest Part 2. I haven't gone and read the lyrics to see what the heck is going on between Power Quest Part 1 and Power Quest Part 2. Never Again is number 9 off of Master of Illusion. Uh, Hold On to Love is number 8 
off Magic Never Dies. Well of Souls off Neverworld, number seven. My screen just blanked out, and usually when that happens, there's a slight glitch in the video. So when I go back and edit this, we'll find out if that happened. Uh, but yeah, Well of Souls off of Neverworld in 2004. Uh, one of the other reasons Neverworld is my number one is because it has more songs in my top ten than any of the others. There's three songs off of Neverworld in my top ten. So a couple of other albums have two. Uh, there's uh, only Wings of Forever is the one that doesn't have any songs in my top ten here. Number five, No More Heroes off of their newest one, The Sixth Dimension. Number four, Crunching the Numbers off of Blood Alliance. Again, not my favorite Power Quest album, actually my least favorite Power Quest album, but that song, uh, it runs over seven minutes. It's got some great stuff in it. Children of the Dream at number four, awesome cheesy chorus. Uh, and then my top three that I stayed away from just so I could, you know, make it interesting, I guess. Off of Neverworld, Forevermore. Another just great, great sing-along chorus. Starlight City comes in at number two off of The Sixth Dimension, and my number one favorite Power Quest song off of Master of Illusion is Cemetery Gates. That song is just amazing from beginning to end, and it jazzes me up every time I hear it. And so that was probably my quickest video yet. All the things I love about Power Quest, they are going to be playing in the U.S. whenever concerts start up again and the next prog power happens hopefully in 2021 uh, they are going to be on the bill so i'm going to get to see them again i saw them last time they were at, at prog power as well so that's going to be lots of fun so i mentioned uh, next week i'm going to tell you my i'm going to play on the radio and also tell you my top 10 favorite songs by yes that are seven minutes long or less I'm also going to make my list of top 10 favorite songs by Yes, which are longer than seven minutes. Those I'm not going to play on the radio because that would be like a five-hour show. And I'll also give my preference ranking of all the Yes albums, all like 20 or 21 of them or whatever it is by now. And then after that, I'm going to hit Nightwish. That's what I'm working on in the background right now. So come on back and listen to those. Thanks very much.